This is the story of Krishna and the serpent Kaliya from the Hindu religion of Hare Krishna. The following essay was printed in the May 1932 edition of The Harmonist. There is a beautiful lake of very sweet water in the Yamuna, which bears the name of Kaliya. This lake happened to be infested by a most venomous serpent from whom the lake derives its name. On a certain day, while the cowboys of Braja were out pasturing their calves on the wooded banks of the Yamuna, they happened to feel thirsty, and not knowing that the water of the lake had been poisoned by Kaliya, drank of its water, which resulted in their instantaneous death. On being apprised of their plight, Krishna came to the spot and restored them to life. Thereafter, Krishna goes down to the lake with the intention of sporting in its water. This enraged the hideous monster who forthwith came out of the depths of the lake into the company of its inheritance and fell upon Krishna, coiling him up in its great hoods, for Kaliya was a thousand hooded serpent and his brood were equally formidable. Thus attacked by Kaliya, with his whole brood, Krishna appeared to faint away under their murderous onslaught. On seeing him apparently slain by his enemies, the cowboys and all the assembled milkmen filled the air with their loud lamentations. But Krishna soon showed that he was quite safe, and he forthwith climbed up the hoods of Kaliya and began to dance on a thousand heads. He danced in an infinite variety of the most marvelous of figures. The pressure of Krishna's feet crushed the towering pride of the myriad hooded monster. Kaliya lowered his hood and vomited blood, but the dance of Krishna did not cease. Kaliya was found tottering towards death when his wives came out of the lake and with palms joined in prayer begged Krishna to spare the life of their husband. The prayers of the wives of Kaliya who had had faith in Krishna moved the son of Nanda to have mercy on Kaliya. Krishna now detested from his terrific dance on the condition that Kaliya was to quit the lake at once and to betake himself to home on the island of Ramanka. Krishna gave him the assurance that Garuda would now do him no harm, and he would respect the print of his feet on the hoods of Kaliya. The water of Kaliya Lake was now rendered immune from all poison and became as sweet as it was before the advent of Kaliya. The taming of Kaliya is one of Brindaban pastimes of boy Krishna. Kaliya is the type of cunning and malice. He is the embodiment of unrelenting cruelty. There is no place for Kaliya in the happy realm of Braja. Deceit and cruelty are a poison to the artless loving nature of the Denzians of Braja. It is quite conceivable for the confining chums of Krishna not to entertain any suspicion regarding the malice intention of cruel and deceitful persons whose purpose is to poison them against Krishna. They may even unwittingly fall into the counsel of such evil persons, but Krishna is sure to rescue his own from the wiles of his enemy. Nay, Krishna also has a plan for curing the evil propensity of Kaliya himself. The process consists of making him feel the touches of his dancing feet, but Kaliya attempts to bear up against all curative chastisement. Instead of feeling the joy of supporting the feet of Krishna on his nasty hoods, the monster finds it impossible to bear his good fortune without undoing the pains of actual death. Even the loyal wives of Kaliya who desire the reformation of the monster and whose good wishes are at least forced to intercede by a prayer for his banishment from the realm of Braja, but the pride of Kaliya has received a mortal check. The banishment of Kaliya from the lake of the Yamuna has the most important spiritual significance. Those who have a purpose to create trouble among the pure devotees of Krishna by inflicting their nature with their own malice dispositions meet with a certain degree of initial success in their nefarious undertaking. This emboldens them to make a direct attack on Krishna himself 
when he appears on the scene of their depraved activities in order to restore the living faith of his own bona fide associates. Those who are not exceedingly clever can never be servants of Krishna, but the service of Krishna is also never available to those cunning is employed for depriving Krishna of the fullness of his enjoyment. Kaliya and those who are actually by nature malicious in disposition are also styled clever in the ordinary phraseology of the damned world. Such rascals may also have the impudence of taking their stand upon the text of scripture by using their cunning in the graceless attempt of depriving Krishna of the service of his own. This kind of conduct may also pass undetected and may even be regarded as possessing the perfect skill of confidential service. But Krishna is sure to express the real nature of the villainy just at the moment when it has been successful in misleading his best loved ones. It is indeed very difficult to understand the ways of Krishna. Krishna apparently permits almost every form of offense to be perpetuated with impunity against his most beloved ones. This has the effect of providing the opportunity for his own, for providing their incomparable love for himself and by means of this unique exhibition of their love for himself and by the means of their love to defeat in the most fruitful manner the machinations of his worst enemies. The friends and chums of Krishna are offered to the malice of cunning and relentless brutes in order to bring out the difference between the two and thereby enable the latter to desist from troubling the devotees of their own accord. But these brutes are never allowed to associate with the servants of Krishna even after they forego their malice towards them. They are eternally debarred from the service of Krishna in Braja. But the touch of Krishna's feet make a real difference between the recipient of his mercy and the other brutes. Kaliya is no longer regarded by Garuda as the enemy of Krishna. Kaliya is, therefore, allowed a place among the protected of Krishna. It is not to follow that is it a paying business to poison the hearts of his servants against Krishna, which is sure to be regarded by the grant of his protection. Yes, this is so after the pride of the miscreant is thoroughly broken by being trod upon by the feet of Krishna himself. He is thereby inspired with a most wholesome dread which effectively prevents him from trying to breed mischief among the bona fide devotees by owning an unwilling allegiance to Krishna and assuming the badge of his servitude by wearing on his head the print of his lotus feet." The mercy shown to Kaliya is so obviously and disproportionately great in its magnitude in the face of the extreme gravity of his offense that no rationalistic, rationalistic explanation can do justice to its full beneficent significance. This has been the story of the serpent king Kaliya and Krishna. What do you think about this story? Please leave your comments below. Thanks for watching and always remember to forge your own path. Today's K video has been brought to you by the following additional K topics. Ken Tovind, Ken Ham, Kind, The Kingdom of God, Kings, and Knowledge.